Hey guys, and welcome to this video on the carbon footprint. Right, so in this video, you're going to learn exactly what the carbon footprint is. You need to know how to analyze the carbon footprint of a given product, service, or event. You also need to understand the ways in which we can reduce our carbon footprint, right? This is a very topical uh, thing right now. People are looking at ways to reduce their carbon footprint, and we are going to have a look at those ways. But we're also going to have a look at the pros and cons of doing this, because you always think it sounds positive. However, there are drawbacks in order to um, reduce your carbon footprint. And so we're going to have a look at all that. So let's dive straight in now. Okay, so first of all, what is the carbon footprint, right? Well, there is a definition. The carbon footprint is the amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, but it's mainly carbon dioxide, given out over the full life cycle of a product, service, or event, right? So we're talking about physical products, we're talking about services, uh, which you can provide, or we're talking about an overall event. And in the light of climate change, we are, of course, looking for ways to reduce our carbon footprint. Okay, so let's have a look at an example right now. Uh, okay, so this is the brand new iPhone, right? It's a product you've probably all seen. But if we're going to analyze the carbon footprint of this phone, then we can go into a load of detail, right? And I'm not going to do the whole thing, but this is just going to give you an example, right? Well, if I, if I label this part, okay, this is a stainless, stainless steel that's just bad writing, but just trust me, it says stainless steel, right? Casing, the outer um, the outer rim of the iPhone is stainless steel. Right, now steel needs to be produced from iron, okay? We extract iron using, um, using a blast furnace, right? We use iron ore and a blast furnace, which requires a ton of energy, right? It requires loads of energy, and that actually, uh, that energy, sorry, is going to emit a load of CO2. Okay, what about this? Well, this is the screen, right? So this is the screen. It's actually an OLED panel, but you've got glass on there as well. Uh, production of glass requires a lot of energy, okay? Production of proper glass requires a lot of energy. You use a lot of water. That water needs to be sourced, and that uses energy, right? So you can see that you're using a lot of energy in terms of uh, producing this product. Uh, what else? Well, it comes in cardboard packaging, right? You can't see it in this diagram, but it, of course, comes in a box. That box uh, requires energy to produce because paper and cardboard and the like are made by cutting trees down. That requires energy, right? Cutting trees down, though, right? I'm actually going to write that. So loss of trees. Okay, cutting trees down. Well, one, it costs energy to do, and also... That those trees absorb CO2, right? They take in CO2 for photosynthesis. If you cut them down, then they can't do that anymore. And so you need to plant new ones. But that's something to take into account as well. It increases the carbon footprint. Right, okay. Talking about boxes, you also have to ship these things, right? These things are sold worldwide. And shipping them requires a ton, a ton of energy because you're, you're putting them in literally ships and lorries and you're driving them all around all over the place uh, and that uses fuel fuel produces co2 and co2 is released into the environment okay one more thing to consider and this is not the only thing to consider right but one more thing to consider is uh, the actual use of the phone right if you've got a phone you know that you probably have to plug it in every day and plug it in and use uses electricity much of that electricity is produced um, by fossil fuels right so by oil for example and the use of that or the burning of that uh, releases CO2 into the environment. Lastly, chucking away uh, the phone once once it's old, right? In a few years time, once it's old and you're going to upgrade, you may have to get rid of it. And it's either going to fill landfill and there uh, certain things break down and release CO2. Things have to be tr uh, transported to landfill or you recycle it and recycling uses energy and releases CO2 as well. So you can see that there is a ton of things which are releasing CO2 into the environment. And that is just scratching the surface, right? You will not be asked to give a, a full breakdown of everything. Uh, which could be releasing CO2 because that's kind of impossible. You can always think of more. All right, so how do we reduce the carbon footprint? Okay, now there's a bunch of ways and I'm just going to go through them in turn. First, okay, 
we increase the use of alternative energy sources. If you think, if we go back, right, loads of these things were actually uh, produced by using a load of energy, right? And that energy production re releases CO2. If we can use alternative energy sources, right, so e.g. solar, well, solar power, apart from the actual production of the panel, the actual running of a solar panel does not produce CO2, and so that would greatly reduce the carbon footprint, right? We can also conserve energy by using more efficient products and making better choices. An example of that, not thinking about the iPhone, is the light bulb, right? If, if you change from a halogen bulb to an LED bulb, they are way more efficient. They, they consume way less energy, and so you actually release way less CO2. Okay, carbon capture technology. Well, carbon capture technology is basically where CO2 emitted is then trapped and stored somewhere, right? And that reduces the amount of CO2 released into the environment, which therefore reduces, sorry, carbon footprint. Okay, offsetting carbon. We, we talked about cutting down trees, increasing the amount of CO2 uh, in the air just now. Well, the opposite is also true. If you plant a load more trees, then you're going to be reducing the amount of CO2 in the environment because they're going to be taking in CO2 for photosynthesis. And finally, and this is actually really, really important, governments can tax emissions to encourage greener technology. And so if governments actually put higher and higher taxes on uh, heavily polluting um, things in industry, so for example, heavily polluting energy resources, heavily polluting products, then companies have an incentive or they have a reason to actually invest in greener technologies. And that's pretty important indeed. And if that can happen at the government level, then it means that you're going to get a widespread adoption of that kind of thing. Okay, so moving on, problems with reducing carbon footprint, right? Because that all sounds great, but it's not as easy as that. Okay, so first of all, people disagree on how much we need to reduce our carbon footprint. Okay, it, sound, it sounds like pretty silly, but in reality, it's not. We, we actually don't know exactly how much impact we're having on the environment. We can be pretty, pretty sure that we are having an impact on the environment when we're increasing um, or accelerating climate change. But we don't have an exact figure on how much we're doing because people disagree so much. It's a very difficult thing to actually determine. And so if some people think that we're not actually having that much of an impact, they will be less likely to actually implement alternative um, energy sources, for, for example, because it's expensive, right? That brings me on to the second point. It's expensive. Whoa, let's, there we go. It's expensive, right? Implementing new technology is always going to be expensive, right? Over time, you could say it might save us money, but to start with, you know, if you had to go and buy a bunch of solar panels, that's going to be expensive, right? And so people don't want to do it because they're comfortable doing what they already do. Yeah, not all governments are on board. This is really important. Uh, famously, the US uh, didn't sign the Kyoto Protocol. There are a bunch of different uh, examples of countries not doing their bit, right? And, and basically not... Um, agreeing to reduce their emissions as much as we would like, right? Uh, this is really important, right? At the, at the personal level, there's a lack of education and understanding on climate change, right? A lot of people, particularly in the older generation, right? I'm not going to stereotype, but particularly in the older generation, because this is a relatively new thing. A lot of people actually don't understand the impact that we're having. They don't understand that using or making different choices or using different forms of energy or using different products is actually beneficial um, to the environment and therefore will, will benefit future generations, right? And, and that might not be their fault. Some people just haven't been taught that and so they're less likely to make those choices, okay? And finally, and this is, this is really true, changing your lifestyle is actually pretty difficult, right? If you're used to chucking everything in the bin rather than recycling everything, changing that requires quite a drastic lifestyle shift, okay? That's difficult. It takes a lot of time and effort to do. And so it's, it's, it's a very, very difficult thing to do in order to encourage people to make that switch. But it's something that in the long term, it looks like anyway, we are going to have to do. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So that was carbon footprint. That's pretty much everything you need. Uh, if, if you do have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the box below or send me a direct email. But as usual, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe because it is going to help me out greatly. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.